Hey, everybody, it's Wednesday night and Wednesday night in New England on the New England RV Dealers Facebook page means just one thing. It means it's time for RVing in New England. And I want to join you in, um, I want you, I want to welcome you. I don't want to join you. I want to go sit in the audience, but I want to welcome you here to the show tonight. My name is John DePietro. I will be um, your sole New England representative and our friend and co-host and owner of the show and leader of the band is Bob Zagami. And Bob is in Italy. He's just outside of Rome, Italy, and there's a seven-hour time difference. So tonight, he's still got jet lag from just going a few days ago, but I think he's going to join us next week. In fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if he does click on here tonight. But we want to um, welcome you all here. Again, my name is John DePietro. I want to just tell you a little bit about what we did this weekend, and then introduce our special guest, Alan Warren, who is standing by in San Antonio, Texas. Um, we had the opportunity to attend the Mass Good Sam Sambury in Greenfield, Massachusetts, and there were about 120 coaches there, about 200 people. And um, we want to wish, uh, thank, actually thank um, Joe and Rhonda Cavosa, who just finished up their sixth year of heading that particular event. And um, I know Walter Swenson is um, looking forward to picking up the reins next year. It was a great event. It takes place every Memorial Day weekend. And uh, it is a location and a position where people really appreciate our veterans who've um, uh, sacrificed themselves and their lives and their families have all been impacted by their serving in the United States Armed Forces. So with that being said, I want to welcome our guest, our special guest, and um, bring him in here right now. And through the magic of Facebook Live in this particular program, there's our friend Alan Warren coming to us from cool. Is it cool down there tonight, Alan? Cool. I know you said it was only 102. Well, it's cooler than it's going to be this weekend. It's supposed to be 102, which is down from the 104 or 105 the weatherman said we were going to have just a few days ago. So Never trust it, those weather people. Let me, let me tell you something. It is summertime in the South, that's for sure. <laughs> summertime in the South. Hey, Alan, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about, and maybe you can talk about it um, in your area as well, but um, one of the nights this weekend what we did was we had some friends coming up from Florida, and we met them at – Mohegan Sun Casino, which is one of the three largest casinos in the entire United States. And I posted a video on Saturday morning, or excuse me, on Sunday morning of the RV parking lot. And there had to be 100 units there. It's got about 8,000 views on Facebook. Um, so people are coming in RVs to casinos because they generally, uh, and, it, and it's, it's a second choice to the um RV parts, or certainly you want people to go to RV parts because they've got um, power hookups and they've got uh, water and they've got sanitation, et cetera. But what's the story down in Texas with people um, utilizing casinos for like a one night stay? Is it, is it a big is it a big thing there, Alan? We don't really have any casinos in, in around the San Antonio area. We've got uh, we've got one down on the border down in Laredo. We've got one up on the Oklahoma Texas border, but. I don't really know. I would imagine it's probably not a lot different from where y'all are up there. But uh, mm. you know, like you said, it is a second choice. It's not nearly as good as going and hooking up. But the, as they say, the price is right at a casino. Until right. you walk in. I was going to say, the price is right for parking, but the overall value may not be as great because um, you could um, imbibe in some activity with uh, chips and that type of thing. And I don't mean potato chips or nachos. Um, which may change the pricing considerably. But we always tell people in New England, pick out your stay at an RV park. And a lot of the RV parks that are located near the casinos, they have free shuttles right over to the casino because it's a lot easier to um, go back into your motorhome or travel trailer and have the air conditioning hooked up to power than having those loud generators going all night. I'm sure you'd agree with that, Alan. Oh, you know, my wife and I went over to Houston last weekend or weekend before and uh, had to stay in a, in a hotel. And it's just not, you know, I used to be able to stay in a hotel, but I don't like sleeping in somebody else's bed uh, yeah. where somebody else has been walking around where they've had their head on my pillow. I, I don't like that. And, and when you have an RV, it's yours and it's, it's your toilet, it's your kitchen, it's your fridge, 
it's yours. And there's something I think that's really special about it. I think I don't think that I'm unique in that in feeling that way. No. People want, people feel comfortable in their own little travel trailer or great big motorhome, either one. Yep. Exactly right. You know, um, what I wanted to do was uh, tell you that my wife felt the exact same way with um, um, the RV when we when we first got it. You know, she wasn't really crazy about it, but then she realized that the capability to have your own sheets, to have your own pillowcases, to have your own blankets and mattresses, and um, you know, and uh, ironically, you know, whether you've got a forty-five foot diesel pusher that cost a million dollars or a pop-up, um, your own toilet facilities. Yeah, uh, there's, it, it's a comfortable feeling. Once you go there, it's kind of hard to, hard to leave that behind and go back to the hotel, motel line. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We want to uh, welcome our viewers here tonight. I'm trying to hit this button to see who they are. I uh, can't quite tell here yet. Uh, that's the good part about having two people. When Bob wants, wants to talk, I'll push buttons. And when he wants to talk, He'll push buttons. But, Alan, tell us about your show because uh, you can see a little bit of the evidence behind you um, as to what your show is and uh, when it airs and, and how the people here in New England would have the capability to, um, you know, view that show. Well, so glad you asked, Mr. DePietro. All right, I do a show called The RV Show USA. We also do another program called RVing in Texas. Uh, I am not an expert RVer. I, I can't fix very much. I can fix a bowl of chili. And I can fix things like that. But, but, but yeah. I, you know, I, I can cook a good brisket, but I can't fix a whole lot of things on an RV. But I can't talk about them. And I know the experts. And I, I just love RVing. I love the people at RV and camp. I think that there's a special, uh, th there's a special uh, bond, if you will. It, it's, uh, and that's one of the things I love about RVers is that, is that when you go into an RV park, you're not looking, is that guy a Republican or a Democrat? And, you know, it, it's just like we all just get along and we tolerate yep. each other. And, uh, and and that's pretty special in today's world. So uh, I do a, a couple hours of radio every single week. In fact, right after RVing in New England, we get rolling. So we're getting ready to get started at the top of next hour. Right. And so people can watch our live stream on the RV Show USA forwards, the RV Show USA and, and our show, if I had to wrap it up, our show is about fun. It's about fun with people that, that enjoy being uh, with their families, enjoy meeting other people, enjoy adventure and travel. And then we have a whole lot of experts, probably a lot of similar people that jump on your show uh, that share their knowledge. But it's really about fun. That's what it's about. So tell us how you got into the RV thing and uh, tell us a little bit about your business background, because uh, you, like me, are both radio guys. Yeah, well. I've been involved in TV and radio for about 35 years, and that's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just I got fired from everything else, I think. Um, I started, started when you were 10. <laughs> 35 years ago, I started doing a t television fishing program. And, and at the time, I didn't know. I thought that if you caught fish, that's what your show was about. And it didn't take me very long to figure out that the fish were an important element, but they weren't as important as so many other things. I had to learn how to write and produce and syndicate and host and edit and tell a story with pictures and get up and speak in front of people and come up with ideas and sell sponsorships. And so I developed all those skills and I, I did pretty well in the outdoor industry. And I always, when we would travel doing these fishing shows, I would stay at RV parks many, many times. I don't care where we went. It was the greatest experience. You'd meet a complete stranger. You know this. Who, who was your? Who turned into your best friend? Yeah, I mean, in two days, you know who they are: their kids or grandkids, where they grew up, you know everything about. And I just loved RV parks, so uh, my career went pretty well in the outdoor industry, and, and I was able to buy a, a, a pretty large piece of property. Sold it several years ago. Sold my television show. I was doing radio back at the time, and an opportunity came to buy an RV park. A friend of mine says, "Hey, why don't you buy Big Chief down in Texas?" Huh? And he told me where it was. I said, well, I, I used to fish right there doing fishing shows. So my wife and I went and looked at it. She fell in love with it. She said, you know, it, was, it needed a lot of work. It did. But okay. we like we like to see things that have potential. And she just looked at it. She said, I love this. And we ended up buying it. So I started running and building the RV park, improving it, bringing the business back, and learning a whole lot. I like to meet people that are a whole lot smarter than me, which isn't hard to do. And so I learned from what they had to, had to teach me. And uh, a friend of mine who was also in the media business, he said, Alan, you know how many, he, he does a lot of uh, automotive radio shows. He says, you know how many automotive radio shows there are? 
a lot. He said, you know how many TV or how many um, RV radio shows there are? Zero. He goes, why don't you start doing one? Hey, that sounds pretty good. That sounds so, pretty good. So uh, about two years ago is when we started putting the, the concept together for the RV show USA. And as I said, the show is about fun. We, we have, uh, we don't have very many sponsors. We really don't, but the ones that we've got are good. I'm proud of them. Uh, we work really hard for them. And, and I think that they are like me. We think long, we think way into the future and not just for the next sale. And I want to, get you in and get you out. These are, are really good people. So I've been blessed that way. And we, we just have a lot of fun doing the show. Yeah. And you, and it should be noted that Lisa is also a very integral part of your show. We just technically don't have the capability to include everybody tonight. Um, once I learn more about this um, uh, engineering part, then we'll, we'll have you back and have Lisa back or, or why don't we just have Lisa in the heck with you? Yeah, there you go. Well, she, she's really the, she's the outgoing one. I'm pretty shy myself, but she, you know, Lisa's never met a stranger. So between the two of us, we love the RV park business. Um, and, and I think that gives us kind of a unique perspective in doing the radio because we are RVers. We know RVers. We know that what they go through, the frustrations, the joys, the challenges that they have with their units and with other people. Uh, so we, we kind of have a, a, I think a pretty cool perspective in uh, where we come from to present this radio show. Well, you know, that's very interesting. One of the questions that we, we do want to ask you is um, give us some tips as to um, from an RV park owner. Um, give me traits of a good camper, of a good customer. And then, and then tell me what the, what a bad camper would be. Oh man. I, I could joke around and I, I, you know, I have a tendency to do that a lot, but um, uh, most RVers, I found people at RV that have done it for very long, they, there, there are unwritten codes of conduct. It's sort of like when you go to church, there's things you do, there's things you don't do. There's a, there's a, a code of conduct, <clears throat> respect for other people, respect for where you are, that, that you're not the center of the universe, that you've got to respect others. And, and with those people, they're amazing. They are helpful and kind and forgiving and accepting all the great qualities that you would want. One of my challenges as an RV park owner is with people that are brand new to RVing that just don't know any better. They're, they may be good people, but they haven't been trained in this code of conduct. And so yeah. Yeah. They, will, they will show up at an RV park and, you know, the, I mean... It, Last weekend, Memorial Day weekend, you know, we didn't have a, a site one that was open, and most people were well behaved. But it only takes a couple to screw things up for everybody else, and they leave the lights on at night. You know the beautiful LED lights, but it looks like a, like the airport out there. You know, at night. <laughs> that's true. That's you know, true. Or, or their dogs. Yep, 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 yep. And you know all the the the, the things, and you got to go over. You got to. One of my most challenging things is to go over and try to be nice. And pick up the dog's big dirty and say, hey, do you need a plastic bag next time? Yeah. And it's it's the training of the people that's frustrating. Um, and, and I've had to learn because of, of legal purposes, we have to have signs everywhere. We've got everywhere. A, a, yeah. a, I know I'm not alone in this. We've got a beautiful swimming pool and hot tub. I mean, it's gorgeous, except for one thing. I got about 77 signs around there. I know I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit, but. No running, no glass, no bottles, no this. And no, I, I felt like one time saying just, a, no, nothing, you know, but you have to have those signs up for people just, well, you didn't say no tobacco. Well, you know, glass around a pool, it, it, uh, it should be, a, you'd think it's a no brainer. You would think it, you would you think, think it, think. I would think it, but other yep. people, it doesn't even enter their mind. And so the challenge I think for us as RV park owners, and it's as other RVers is to be patient with people. Because there's a side of me that wants to just go and just get out. But I know that's not good for business. And I was an idiot. I'm an idiot still sometimes. But uh, I need somebody to help me, you know, to get back on track. And I want to help other people do the same. Because I think most people really do want to get along. They don't want to come into a campground and make everybody mad. Yep. Hey, Alan, um, or we should tell people that if you've just joined us, my name is John DiPietro. Bob Zagami is in Italy. And uh, probably overeating gnocchis and pasta and cavatelli and uh, cannolis, et cetera, et cetera. I, I saw Bob, some of his pictures of, of the wine. 
I'm sure you would <laughs> never have any of that wine, right? You know, I didn't see those pictures, but I did comment. He's sending me pictures of, not me, but he's sending us on Facebook pictures of the Coliseum and the Trevi Fountain. I said, Bob, I can read those on National Geographic and all these other things. I want to see pictures of your family because nothing, nothing's crazier than bringing back um, vacation pictures and no people are in them. Right, right. I think uh, we're going to, and other people have commented that um, he should be taking pictures of the family. Um, etc. But folks, we want to tell you that our guest is Alan Warren, um, a nationally uh, prominent host of the RV show USA. In fact, Alan, we've got normally we've been doing about 45 or 50 minutes, but tonight we're going to have to keep it to 30 or 35 because Alan's got his show. Luckily, Alan, for um, uh, for the time differences, we're able yeah. to do the show because basically we're on at the same time. Kind of like uh, you're on NBC, I'm on CBS, or whatever the case. But if you have a question, folks, feel free to write them under comments. I'm trying to uh, see this board here to see who we've got listening and viewing. Uh, and for some reason, I can't hit it, but I know there are several people out there. But our friend Jerry, who works down at Majors RV on Cape Cod. So, Alan, whenever you get up here, you've got to get to Cape Cod because my guess is that the Texas lobsters and the Cape Cod lobsters might be a little bit different. I think ours came from Cape Cod. That very well could be. Yeah. But, you know, you know Jerry, let, let me tell you real, real quickly, you asked about the radio show. Let me tell you how we do it. So okay. I, this is a, we do a radio program that's syndicated on stations from Portland to Daytona Beach, and it airs on Saturdays and Sundays, you know, weekend programming one day a week. But we produce it live, like you and I are doing right now. We yep. produce our show live on Wednesday nights. And we stream it on Facebook, on the RV Show USA Facebook page, so people get to see. You know, we don't edit. I mean, it is what it is. Um, it is. We can't, we can't run commercials on uh, Facebook, so you get to – we banter back and forth with folks and answer their questions and visit with them. And we have a lot of fun, you know, in the commercial breaks. But So the show that we do on Wednesday night, tonight, will air on stations this Saturday and Sunday. All over the area. You know, Joe had, has asked, Alan, do you have snowbirds – at your resort, we do. We have uh, we have a lot of them, and those are some of the greatest human beings in the world. Our favorite time—I probably shouldn't say this—but our favorite time of year for Lisa and me to be up at Big Chief would be from November first to about the end of April. That's when the very last ones leave. But I mean, we have the greatest human beings. They come from North Dakota and Michigan and Iowa and Wisconsin, and we have football parties and. It, we play penny rummy. We do a lot of nothing and have a lot of fun doing it. Now, this past year with football parties, everybody expected a lot from the um, from the the Houston team, the Texans. Um, and then, uh, are you closer to Houston or Dallas? Um, a little bit closer to Houston, but I, I'm not a big football fan. You know, I just literally this last year, uh, up until last year, I wasn't very fond. I probably shouldn't say this. I wasn't fond of Mr. Brady. It's just something about him. He was just too good, too good looking, too talented, won too yeah. many times. And when I finally was smart enough to look into who he was, the kind of human being he was, I'm going, man, was I an idiot. This guy is awesome. You know, he works hard. He's a good man. He's a, he's a family. He's a great human being. And, uh, anyway, it was just, it was kind of a shame to see what happened to him, you know, but, um, and, that's uh, called sucking up to the New Englanders, by the way. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yes. I'm good at that. Hey, I'm a radio yeah. TV guy. I'm good at sucking that's right. up, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, somebody posted here, Lisa posted that um, the snowbirds really are your winter family. And when you go to the internet and search your property, the, um, and I'll, I'll put the website up here in a second, um, people have glowing reports about your place and that has got to make you feel good it, it does you know you can't make everybody happy we every once in a while we just we just can't do it we do our best but but uh, I, I think we are all all of us we're in the people business you know when I was in the fishing show business it wasn't about fish it was about people it was relating to people I'm we're we're in the communication business but if we don't commit connect with people if they don't like us we're doomed. And so uh, we're the people business up at Big Chief, and we love people, especially people that have share the same passions that we do. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us how big the park is. How many? How many? Uh, it's it's not sites. a very big park. We've got seventy two sites and ten cabins, uh, which is just enough for us to keep our arms around most of the time. Yep, and that allows people to really uh, develop friendships if they're going to be there. See, it is the winter business mostly seasonal business, or is it? Um, um, we're we're, we are, know, we're uh, it, on a map of Texas. If you were to find Austin, we're about an hour west of Austin. Okay, and we're right on a lake, a great big lake called Lake Buchanan, a uh, very popular, uh, you know, tourist lake, if you will. So we're a tourist destination. We're not. Uh, we have some people that come and they work at a pipeline. They're doing some construction in the area, but most of them are families. Most of them are coming to for water sports and to enjoy the area. Uh, you know, we've got beautiful wildflowers in the springtime, blue bonnets and the blue bonnet festivals and things like that. But uh, our winters generally are pretty mild and the winter Texans come down, you know, to escape the cold stuff up North and they fall in love. With it. What's that? Within Texas. The, the, you said the winter Texans? Well, we call them winter Texans, but they come from outside the state of Texas. Oh, okay. You know? okay. I thought there were people from the northern part of the state. John, we will take them from anywhere. Okay? Anywhere. Or as they we'll say, even down, take them from Massachusetts, man. Anywhere. Now, um, J Jerry wrote that you got a 7.9 on parkreviews.com, so that's almost an 8. That That's better than my grades in school, <laughs> Alan, I'll tell you that. Well, uh, we, we, we have a good time doing it. We're getting, I think we're getting better. You know, we're getting better and better with the, with our clientele and way, the way we service people. And we got some plans for the future that hopefully will allow us to expand a little bit. So. Yeah. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions for Alan or Lisa, who's uh, somewhere in the background there, can, can Lisa, is Lisa on the other side of the camera, Alan? Is she? No, no. Actually, sitting over here, stage left. Yeah, stage left. Oh, there it's we our go. Daughter, Miss Katie. There she is. Right oh, there. hold on. Let's get. Uh, she, she is. What you got to get there, Katie. Now you're on. Are you yeah. watching it, Katie? I am. Yeah. Okay. So, so she is. Uh, she's our graphics girl on the show. So when graphics we bring up, girl. Yeah, the <laughs> graphics girl. Uh, so when we bring up titles and videos and and uh, things like that. Uh, it's all happening right here. Yeah, it's all happening. She punches oh, buttons and she does it. I don't yep. know how to do it. All I know how to do is talk and interrupt It's, it's true. <laughs> but he doesn't know how to do it. Yeah, I'm doing it here. And um, I tell you, I give Bob credit because when Bob does it, we'll, sometimes we have four people on. And, um, you know, in the other format that's available on this particular um, format that we use. And um, then he will take pictures. You know, he would have an aerial shot of your place. And he's putting it all in it. And I just am amazed. Um with the it's number like, one. What is it like? It's like patting your head and rubbing your tummy. Oh, exactly. And, and stomping your feet. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, oh, Lisa's at home. Okay. She so, um, and it's what? Uh, 623 in Texas. Yep. 623 in Texas and, uh, uh, you know, still smoking hot outside. But, yeah. you, so, know, you know, I, I was going to tell you some of the things that, that uh, before our, our interview, I was wondering, you know, what can I talk about? And, um, some of the things that I hear from RVers down here and some of my personal concerns, and, and uh, I don't want to ruffle anybody's feathers. I promise I don't. But we have got so many people buying RVs. Lots. Right. As you, yep. I mean, lots and lots yep. and lots of them. And they're just not enough places for these people to go. Not on the weekends. Now, during the week, you know, right. we have some open sites. But but I, I had a guy the other day, he says, you know, he sent me a picture and said, look what I bought. It was a beautiful uh, fifth wheel and slide. Uh, beautiful. He said, you can't get in any place. I said, you got to book it months ahead of time. Right. I, I didn't know that. No. So, you know, but see, Alan, many times the beauty of RVing is that you can spontaneously say on a Thursday night to Lisa, hey, you know, we don't have the show again until, um, you know, next week or we're going to do repeats. Let's just let's head to Dallas because, um, you know, there's a show that we want to see and you don't you know, you don't know where you're going to go and you don't make reservations. I mean, that's the thing that we like. One particular year we were heading to Vermont and, um, you know, that's one state to the north of us. And just when I got to the to the interstate highway where I had to go left or right, I said to my wife, let's go to New York instead. And she said, fine. So we drove south on the highway instead of north on the highway. 
Um, but it is an absolute issue because we've got the capability. Older people have the capability to, you know, um, do a Walmart thing or, um, you know, again, a casino parking lot. Um, but the young families that are getting into RVing for the first time, they really need a campground because the kids, they're caged up. Um, and you know, and you know, it, it's, it's an issue about it. it. RVing, back when we were kids, we, we spent most of our time outdoors in the afternoon. We had a connection yeah. with nature in the outdoors. We played football and tag and hide, all that kind of stuff. And kids nowadays, they don't do that. It's not their grow. fault. You know, it, it's we have we have given them out the computers. They they uh, act as babysitters, and they're good babysitters. But it it disconnects them from social connectivity with other people, as well as uh, a, a relationship with nature. RVing and RV parks are one of the few places today where you can take your child and feel pretty safe with your child being there and to talking to other people, meeting other families. And it gives them an opportunity. And they want to put their phones down. They really do. They want to play on the walkie-talkies and throw rocks and go for a hike. And You are 100% correct. And, I, in fact, I even wrote it down to talk about that, but I skipped over the notes. Um, last week when we were at the Good Sam event, okay, we brought our 8-year-old and 7-year-old granddaughters who are veteran RVers now. They've been doing it since they were, you know, two and a half to three years old. And um, they came with us. Um, not knowing what to expect. And we went over to the registration table and talked to the people there. And there were five or six other kids there. Uh, and both granddaughters hooked on to one girl that was the same age. And um, they ran off. And I said to the other grandparents that were there and the other people, I said, I don't know where, her, where the kids are right now. But as Agami said, you feel confident that your kids are safe. And the interesting thing is this, our girls had walkie talkies with them. You just alluded to them a moment ago. Yeah. Um, and the younger one said, Nana, we've got a new friend, so you don't need to bother us anymore. And, and turn off the, turn off the radio. How nice is that? I mean, th that's what we want from our children. Exactly. Exactly. You know, they meet new friends that way and they went out and got clam chowder together and um, then they got ice cream together after that. And my granddaughter rode the other girl's bicycle. Um, in fact, it's Walter Swenson, uh, who's going to be the new president. It was his granddaughter. I don't know if Walter's on with us tonight because I can't figure out how to figure out who's watching us. Um, but it was it, it, it's an actual example of what you just mentioned on how to um, how you feel great when the kids are in an RVing situation. And if you couldn't feel, I, I don't think that you could feel just the same level of comfort if your kids went out in most neighborhoods nowadays, if they just disappeared, part of your brain would be worried to death. Absolutely. About some weirdo, some, you know, and, right. and so when they're in the outdoors, when they're in an environment that is conducive to fun and play and safety and nature, they, and they get to see things. It, it yeah. can be something as simple as a, a squirrel climbing a tree or a shooting star at night or cooking a marshmallow on a fire. You know, it's the simple things is what they, our children need. And it, it is, you know, somebody that doesn't know, they go, what's that? That's stupid. Yeah. Let me tell you Alan, it's worth how do you everything. Put, how do you put that in a brochure? You can't really put it in a brochure. It's, it's that intangible that you get. It's that same feeling that you get when you're, pulling into an RV park and, you know, you got to do a little bit of hooking up, but it's, it's that feeling that you get um, even on a Friday afternoon in traffic. If, if you're in the RV, it's a different feeling than if you're Friday afternoon commuting in your car or truck. You know, it's going to get better. There are some bumps in the road, as they say, proverbial bumps in the road and you're going to have some problems, but you know what? The good, far outweighs the bad and that's yep. why i think that the future of rving is pretty good because all these youngsters these young yep. kids they will never ever forget the memories they're making today with their moms and dads and grandparents and then 20 years from now guess what they're going to want to do hey i remember how much fun we had and one of the things with the good sam people this weekend um i talked to one of the moms who had their a uh, 16 year old son and 12 year old daughter there and, and her 88 and 86 year old parents there. So they had 
three generations, the Cole family from Rhode Island. Um, and I said to her, Lisa, you know, do you know where your son is or, wh or whatever it is? He says, I don't need to know. And I said, isn't that a great feeling? She said, well, I had that same feeling growing up because I went with those people over there. So she had her parents, her and her husband and her kids. And uh, one of the, and Walter was here. Walter said, great kids. Um, he is the grandfather of the little girl that my daughter, my grand, my daughters, that my granddaughters befriended. And, uh, and, and what my girl said uh, to his granddaughter, see you next year. Wow. But, um, you know, but there'll be a couple more times they'll be able to meet during the year um, because it's that magic of watching kids make new friends. Doesn't fit in a brochure, Alan, does it? I mean, you've been in advertising. Doesn't fit in a brochure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that without sounding too preachy, that we have a responsibility, a responsibility to those, those kids, our kids, you know, to connect with them, to allow them to have those experiences that we had. It's a... It's something like you said, it won't fit into a brochure. It is, it is deeply, deeply uh, emotional for us. As we get older, we value those simple things in life. And to provide those opportunities, sitting around a campfire, listening to people talk, doing nothing. Uh, as I say, watching a shooting star. There's such value in that. And, and, and every day we're you know, pushing on our buttons on our computers and how fast can we make a phone call? Yeah. Who RVing gives that opportunity to get out of that for a while. And that's why I love it. So who you got on your show tonight? Because we'll be able to listen. We can we can tell our people to listen to you. Um, who you got on tonight? Well, I was hoping you would ask me about my shirt. Um, my shirt. I'm wearing an Alaska shirt uh, because oh, it's so okay. dang hot here. We're going to okay. be talking about Alaska in hour number two. Good all idea. about it. And uh, I met actually met a guy last year in the Seattle airport, and he owns. It's called Great Alaskan Holidays up in Anchorage. They have like 400 Class C RVs and people fly uh, in there. They rent them a Class C. They're, none of them are older than three years old. They head on out. It's affordable. It's fun. It's clean. It's safe. It's it's the bomb, I'm telling you. So we're going to be talking about Alaska a lot tonight. Now, here's one thing that I learned about Alaska and about the RVs up there. And I don't know if this gentleman, you have to ask this gentleman off the air if it's the case, but a lot of those um, units that um, are shipped to Alaska are made at the Winnebago factory in Forest City, Iowa. And Winnebago has a program. They will give you the motorhome to drive to Alaska. They won't pay you for it, but you get like two weeks to bring it there. Yeah. So it's, and, it's and a they, great deal their, for both parties. They turn their inventory every three years. So the units, and they're only used like four months a year because, right. you know, it's, heck, it's Alaska. But, yeah. but it's so vast. It's, you've been to Alaska. It's so beautiful. And, and, and there's so many opportunities to do things. Uh, flying into Anchorage is fairly inexpensive. Yep. Uh, the, the, the Great Alaskan holidays, are, they're right there. I think they'll even pick you up and take you out. Uh, Lisa and I are planning a trip there for September. After all the kids go back to school, we're going to go back for a late summer trip to Alaska in a Class C. And just kind of chill for a while. I'm going to find a radio station that will let me bum their equipment for a couple hours on a yeah, Wednesday yeah, night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, Alan, we want to, again, thank you so much. I know that uh, we said we we're going to cut the short the show short a little bit tonight. Actually, we're over our normal time anyway. Um, and thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us tonight and remind people that your show is called The RV Show USA. It's available right here on Facebook, and um, uh, if you can't catch tonight's show, all the other shows are archived there. I know Zagami's been on a few times. I've been on a couple times, and um, it's just a great show, and um, we want to thank you and Lisa for taking time from your schedule to be with us and to let people know that we will be back here again next week, same time, same channel, and if everything works out, our um, regular co-host, Bob Zagami will be joining us live from Rome, Italy. So with that being said, hey, everybody, let's go RVing. Bye-bye, John.